Hello, and welcome back to Law Bits for Seniors. We talk about important tips to help you with money and legal stuff, especially for your golden years. Today, we're diving into a big question for your retirement. Do I need a living trust? Whether you're planning for the future or just curious, this episode is packed with useful insights. So, let's get started. Imagine a treasure chest. This chest is like a special box where you can keep your money, your house papers, stocks, and even things like your grandma's old necklace. This treasure chest is what we call a living trust. It's like a promise you make, but written down in a special way. In this promise, there are three main people involved. First, there's you, the person who creates the treasure chest. In fancy words, you're called the grantor or settler. You decide to put your treasures into the chest. Next, there's someone you choose to look after the chest. This person is called the trustee. They make sure your treasure chest is safe and everything inside it is taken care of properly. Then, there are the people who will get your treasures from the chest, like your kids or grandkids. They are called beneficiaries. Also, there are two types of these treasure chests. One is a kind you can open and change what's inside whenever you want. That's called a revocable trust or living trust. The other kind is like a locked chest. Once you close it, you can't change what's inside. That's called an irrevocable trust. Think again of your treasure chest, the living trust. The best thing about this treasure chest is how it keeps your treasures private. Unlike a will, which is like an open book for everyone to read when you're not here, your treasure chest keeps things under wraps. You might be wondering what a will is. Well, when someone passes away, their will goes through a process called probate, where a court looks at the will and decides how to distribute their stuff. But everyone can see what's in the will, which might worry some people. A trust is different. It's like having a private vault that only people you trust can look at. This keeps all your important treasures, like your house, money, or other family treasures, secret and safe, hidden away from prying eyes. For example, let's say you own a big business and want to make sure it stays in your family. A living trust can help. You can place your business in this chest and it stays a family secret, away from outsiders. Plus, this trust acts like a shield, protecting your business from future troubles. A trust is also great because it lets you be the boss of your things, even after you're gone. Usually, when someone passes away, their stuff goes through probate, which can take a long time and involves a lot of people. But with a trust, you skip all that. You get to make all the rules about who gets what and when. For example, if you want to make sure your granddaughter gets your special jewelry when she's 25, you can set that up in your trust. Trusts can also help with taxes. If you have a lot of assets, a trust can help reduce the taxes that might be due after you're gone. This is really helpful for people who have a lot of assets. And one more really cool thing about a trust is that it can keep your stuff safe from certain problems, like if your children ever get divorced. Imagine you set up this trust right now. It's like a strong locked box. Even if your child's marriage doesn't work out, their ex-husband or ex-wife can't touch what you've put in the trust for your child. This means your special things, like your house or savings, stay safe and go only to the people you want, like your kids or grandkids. Understanding whether a living trust is right for you depends on your unique situation. Let's look at some factors that can help you decide. Consider your age and what you own. If you're older and have assets like a house or substantial savings, a trust can be really beneficial. It ensures that your assets are managed smoothly when you're sick or not around anymore. Where you live also plays a big role. In states like New York or California, where the probate process is particularly lengthy and complex, having a trust can save a lot of time and hassle. Take the example of Tom and Linda, a married couple, they own a home and have some savings. For them, setting up a living trust makes a lot of sense. It means that if something happens to them, their children won't have to wait through a long, complicated process to receive their inheritance. But what if you're single? 
In this case, a living trust becomes even more important. It's not just about passing on your assets. It's also about managing your affairs if you ever become unable to do so yourself. A trust ensures that someone you trust is looking after your assets and your care. So, do you need a living trust? If you have real property or live in a state with a lengthy probate process, it's probably a wise choice. A living trust is a great tool for anyone who wants to make things easier and clearer for their family in the future. When it comes to living trusts, there are a few myths and misunderstandings that can make people hesitant. Let's clear some of these up. Living trusts are only for the wealthy. This is a common myth. Many people think that living trusts are just for those with a lot of money or property. But that's not true. A living trust can be a smart choice for anyone who wants to make sure their assets are handled smoothly and privately, no matter how much they own. Setting up a trust is too complex. Some people worry that creating a trust is a complicated process. While it's true that setting up a trust involves some legal steps, it's not as complex as it might seem. With the right help, like from a lawyer who knows about trusts, it can be pretty straightforward. Think of it like following a recipe to bake a cake. Once you have the right ingredients and instructions, it's quite doable. Trusts need a lot of ongoing maintenance. Another misconception is that once you set up a trust, it needs a lot of work to maintain. Actually, most trusts don't need a lot of ongoing maintenance. Once it's set up, it mostly takes care of itself, especially if you choose a living trust, which is more flexible and easier to manage. Trusts are a hassle to modify. People often think that once a trust is set up, it's difficult to change. In reality, a living trust can be changed quite easily. This type of trust allows you to adjust things as your life changes like if you acquire new assets or want to include new family members. Concerns about losing control over assets. A big worry for some is that they'll lose control over their assets once they're in a trust. But with a living trust, you maintain control over your assets. You can use, spend, and invest these assets just like you do now. Remember, the key to overcoming these myths is understanding and getting the right information. A living trust can be a valuable tool for many people, offering benefits like privacy, ease of asset management, and peace of mind. Now, you might be seriously thinking about a living trust, but hold on, you probably have some questions. And let's be honest, chatting with a lawyer can sometimes feel like opening a can of very expensive worms. So, before you reach for your wallet, Let's tackle some of those big questions and shed some light on how a living trust really works. How does a living trust differ from a will? A living trust and a will are both ways to take care of your stuff when you're not here. But a living trust keeps things private and skips the long court process that a will goes through. In a trust, your things are given to your family or friends quietly without everyone else knowing. Some folks worry about how much it costs to make a living trust. Creating a living trust can cost some money up front, but it often saves more in the long run. People also wonder what happens to the trust after they're gone. Your trust does exactly what you want. The person you picked, the trustee, will give your stuff to the people you chose, like your family or a charity. Another common question is whether you can set up a trust on your own. While it's possible to create a trust by yourself, it's usually better to get help from a lawyer. They know all the legal rules and can make sure your trust does exactly what you want it to do. Lastly, some people wonder if they still need a power of attorney if they have a trust. It's a good idea to have both. A living trust manages your assets in the trust, but a power of attorney can make decisions about things like your health care or other financial matters if you're not able to. So, do you need a living trust? It's not a one-size-fits-all answer, but for many, it's a smart choice for managing their assets and ensuring their legacy. A living trust offers control, privacy, and simplicity in estate planning. 
We hope this episode helps you understand living trust better. Remember, planning today can bring peace of mind for tomorrow. Thank you for joining us on Law Bits for Seniors. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe for more valuable tips for your happy retirement. See you next time.